fighting for freedom, left untreated, sick and waiting for care, frustrated with no benefits, denied and left in despair, dying before help ever comes. Battles veterans are fighting here at home. Two News investigates the VA, system of shame. I'm Russ McCaskey. For the last 18 months, the two news investigators have been talking with hundreds of local veterans, working to help many get benefits and medical care, and investigating the agencies that are supposed to be helping them, the Veterans Administration and the VA Hospital in Muskogee. We found victims of a system that's broken, people who suffered frustration, pain, even unbelievable loss, victims of all ages, from the very old to the very young. Poor Pendleton never got to meet Benjamin David. I never got to hold him. I never got to kiss him. I never got to tell him that I loved him. But one procedure never approved by the VA, one recommendation the VA never took, may have sealed Benjamin's fate before he was ever brought into this world. Play the card. Sephora has five boys. <laughs> It's a rowdy house. <laughs> and with a sixth boy on the way, it was about to get even rowdier. Sephora's last two pregnancies required some extra attention. So this time she started seeing a specialist who deals with high risk pregnancies. About four months in, her physician, Dr. Fumia, noticed something that looked like a serious concern. The placenta might migrate into the bladder. So he wanted to do an MRI and a bladder scan. Dr. Fumia had stated previously that I had a very high risk um, of rupturing and bleeding out, and that these tests needed to be completed within seven days. But despite the warning of the potentially life-threatening situation, the VA denied the bladder scan and didn't immediately approve the MRI either. Savora immediately called the Muskogee VA relentlessly trying to get its decision changed. A week had passed. Still, the VA would not approve the procedure. I woke up just like any other normal day, woke up my children, get them ready for school. Then she went back to her room. As soon as my head hit the pillow, I felt a huge gush of blood. It was as if I had a water hose that was on full blast. The blood was from an internal tear, something doctors told Sephora the bladder scan would have detected. Sephora was taken to the hospital and ended up in a six hour surgery. She made it through the surgery, but little Benjamin did not. That I lost my baby and that I'm barren and that I buried my son, that I almost died all at the neglect of the VA. For weeks, Sephora and Senator Inhofe's office worked to arrange a meeting with the Muskogee VA. All the while, Sephora says the medical director, James Floyd, sent these emails to Inhofe's office saying Sephora was a chronic no-show and said the bladder scan was denied for the baby's safety. All things Sephora said were not true. In fact, according to more emails obtained by the two news investigators, Floyd apologized to Sephora, acknowledging the scan would not have harmed the baby after all. To be denied that, to lose your child, then to be lied to. Slap in the face. I mean, I, the care that I deserved, the care that I needed, they withheld. We reached out to Floyd. He declined a request for an interview. After hearing about Sephora's case, Senator Jim Inhofe requested the Inspector General investigate. There's something that could have been done and the treatment was recommended. Oh, I know, I love Benjamin too. Sephora's bladder scan was never approved by the VA. The MRI was three days after Benjamin was laid to rest. While little Benjamin David may be the youngest victim of the VA system, He's a far cry from the only victim of the VA in our area. We want you to meet one local veteran who describes his treatment by the VA in one word, inhumane. When we first met
met Monty, tubes were pumping life into his veins. Too weak to walk, he was confined to a hospital bed. The agonizing aftermath of a journey through the VA system. Is that Monty? Yeah, that's Monty. Sabrina Austin, Monty Collins' niece, took us back to Monty's younger days when he enlisted in the Coast Guard in the Korean War. He would always say, you need to be proud of your father for being in the military and being on the front lines and all that. But he would kind of, uh, kind of minimize his, his role. Monty served two years. In April, Monty had a mild heart attack. He was taken to a local heart hospital. They prepped me for the surgery. And uh, just before they got to it, VA called and said, we're not going to pay for that expensive surgery. But it wasn't a quick decision. At this point, Monty says two days had gone by while Monty prepped for surgery, meaning no food or water. Finally, the VA decided to fly Monty to its Houston hospital. We waited and waited. At the end of the day, the doctor came in and said they'd do surgery. So they prepped him for that. Again, we waited, waited, waited. And yet another day passed prepping for surgery, meaning no food or water. The doctor returned the next day. He started to run another test. I said, let's just stop. I said, I've had enough. After suffering a heart attack, going four and a half days without food or water, and never getting a decision on surgery, Monty just wanted to go home. The VA put Monty on a gurney in the back of an ambulance and drove him back to Tulsa. An eight and a half hour ride that left Monty with sores and bruises. Bumping and bouncing, all, you know, that just, uh, just tore me up. I can't help but think if I'd have gotten timely care when I first hit this place, you know, that on the 27th of April, but things might have been a whole lot different. Prior to his heart attack, Monty called the VA about chest pains, but says no one returned his calls. Monty isn't alone. The inspector general is investigating cases of poor care in VAs across the country. There are two VA hospitals in Oklahoma, one in Muskogee, the other in Oklahoma City. A federal audit into the Muskogee VA revealed 200 patients waited 90 days or more to see a doctor, and 500 patients waited a month. The two news investigators sat down with Richard Crockett of the Muskogee VA to ask about Monty's case. Is that acceptable? You know what? No, it isn't acceptable. When we asked why the VA moved Monty to Houston after he was prepped for surgery in Tulsa, they said, Since we have those doctors anyway, it's cheaper for us to do it. It's more efficient. Cheaper, yes. But the VA says it's not about the money. In these particular instances, cost never comes up. It it just doesn't. That's, uh, you just got to trust me on that. It's always about the patient. We took those responses and Monty's story to Congressman Jim Bridenstine. This is a nightmare and this is exactly what is wrong with the VA. It's why people need to be held accountable. This is not the way we treat our veterans. After that, Bridenstine backed VA reform legislation so no other veteran has to experience what Monty did. And how do you plan on holding uh, the VA responsible. What we have heard now from um, the Justice Department is that there will be, uh, where appropriate, uh, criminal investigations. I may not make it through this, but maybe the next one that has a heart attack will get timely care, you know. Sadly, Monty didn't make it. Monty took his own life six weeks after he went to the Houston VA and two days before he was supposed to meet Congressman Jim Bridenstine to talk about the need for change. Monty's final mission for a system he fought for, he worked for, and he felt ultimately let him down. It's estimated that more than a thousand veterans have died as a direct result of the VA's misconduct in the last 10 years. That according to a recent report from Oklahoma's U.S. Senator Tom Covert. He spent more than 18 months looking into the scope of the problem and why it exists. There are more than 350,000 veterans in Oklahoma, men and women who put their lives on the line in service to our country. Thousands of them denied medical care or waiting for medical care that never comes. Even if a veteran needs emergency medical care like Monty Collins, their claims and procedures can get wrongfully denied. In fact, a recent study from the General Accounting Office found that 20% of veterans' emergency health care claims are denied when they shouldn't be due to mismanagement, 
paperwork errors, and noncompliance within the VA system. To Oklahoma's U.S. Senator Tom Coburn, that's just the tip of the iceberg. The VA has significant problems. They have a significant cultural problem. But the biggest problem they have is they have no accountability. Friendly Fire, a 100-page report from Senator Coburn after he looked into issues at the VA. The highlights include $20 billion in waste and mismanagement that could have been spent providing health care and benefits to veterans. Criminal activity at the Department of Veterans Affairs, such as drug dealing, theft, and even murder. Keeping veterans waiting for months on end for needed medical care and covering up those waiting lists. And doctors practicing without a license. We suspect 10 to 15 percent of the doctors at VA have lost their licenses. So you can be a doctor who has lost your license and work in the VA. Not only has this cost veterans their care and in some cases their lives, it also cost you, the taxpayer. Coburn's report reveals the federal government has paid out more than $845 million for VA malpractice and wrongful death within the past 10 years. The two news investigators went digging further and found that the Muskogee VA hospital alone has had 42 malpractice suits filed in the past five years, with veterans and their families asking for $6,170 million in damages. All of the money, the cover-ups, delays, and mismanagement are due to a problem in the VA culture, according to Coburn. We found an absolute culture of unaccountability, that people were more interested in protecting their jobs than taking care of the veterans who gave them the freedom to have a job in the first place. Veterans here not only fought for those jobs in the VA, but also our safety. Veterans aren't the only ones affected by the denials and delays at the VA. Families are too. Their stories coming up.